Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to muck dye a spiral. Decide where you want the center of your spiral to be and spiral it up. Now I'm using this microwave lid, and I have to tell you guys, I keep saying it, but this thing really makes the spirals turn out amazing. And it's super affordable. I want to say it was $6.99 from Amazon, and I have a link for it down below in the description box. With all the money that we spend on dye, I'd say this is a really reasonable purchase. Look at how good this spiral is, and it was quick and easy to do. I like to secure my spirals using rubber bands, but you could also use kite string. It's just a matter of preference. Using a washable marker, mark out your pattern. You all know what time it is. It's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. So when adding the dye, you want to add a nice layer. I get asked all the time, how much dye are you supposed to use? Well, it varies from project to project. For this particular project, I want good color saturation, so I'm going to add a nice layer, but it doesn't need to be super thick. So if you're coming back to your project and you're having a lot of undissolved dye, two things could be happening. You're adding way too much dye, or you're not adding enough ice. Uh, in, in the situation where you have undissolved dye, go ahead and just add another layer of ice if it doesn't look like your whole project is dyed. If it looks saturated on the front and the back, undissolved dye is not a big deal. It'll just wash away down the sink. But you might want to think about adjusting the amount that you're using. So it's not a really easy question to answer because like I said, it varies from project to project and person to person. I guess it just depends on what you're looking for. Some projects I'll use a lot less dye because I'm looking for more white space. I hope that makes sense. I realize some of you might be new to tie dyeing, so I'm going to explain what muck dyeing is. So it's an ice dye technique where you leave whatever you're tie dyeing in the water, the muck water. So when the ice and the dye combine and the ice melts, you know it's going to create a pool of water, you don't take what you're dyeing out. And what it does is it creates depth and it creates darker lines. It just depends on if you're doing a scrunch or a spiral. So with spirals, you get lines and with um, scrunch tie dyes, you get depth. I hope that explains it.
Once you get your dye on the way you like it, you want to put on a mask and sprinkle some soda ash on for good measure. This is not a necessary step, but I do it just in case. I want to make sure that the pH of my cotton fibers stays at around 10.5 to 11. I get asked how much ice we're supposed to use, and it really does vary from project to project. For this particular project, I probably put about an inch of a layer on, and it's where you can look down onto the project and you don't really see a lot of the shirt showing through. You do want some muck down in there, but it doesn't need to be several inches deep where the project is just floating. We're having a real heat wave here in Oregon, so I decided I was going to set this outside, but you need to cover it. So I just covered it with a little foil pan from the dollar store. Now you'll hear people in the community say, trust the muck, set it and forget it. And to a certain degree, that's true. You don't wanna mess with your project a whole lot, but if you have to pick up your bowl and move it, that's fine, but try to leave it alone. It's been 24 hours since the ice has melted and now it's time for the rinse out. You wanna start by using cold water and gradually increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do a hot water cycle. I do a second hot water cycle using Synthropol, which is a textile detergent from Dharma. And I do a third hot water cycle using Milsoft which brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process, and I also get that from Dharma. And I do have links below in the description box for everything that I use to create my tie-dye. Well, here it is, guys. Here's our shirt after it's been washed and dried, and I absolutely love this shirt. Now, I realize I probably say that about most of my projects, but I really, really love this shirt because I made it for myself. I never make anything for myself. I only wear the rejects, but I actually wanted something where I could pick the colors just for me. And I love this color combination. I love the amethyst. It's such a beautiful purple color. And if you look, it splits into some really nice blues. And then jade green is one of my favorite colors in the green tones. And I just love the muck dye because it gives those nice dark lines. And with the ice dye, you get the color splits. So all around, I absolutely am so enamored with this shirt. What do you guys think of this shirt? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all for future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.